Newcastle and it's limo time. So taking a short hop with the UK's newest rail operator, Lumo, up to Edinburgh. So let's see how the holistic approach to rail travel works out. The station was opened on the 29th of August 1850 by Queen Victoria, and the day was declared a public holiday in Newcastle. I wonder if we'll see such similar celebrations when HS2 is completed. Long distance services at Newcastle are served by Cross Country, LNER, Trans Pennine Express, and now Lumo. Local services are operated by Northern and the Tyne and Weir Metro. There also seems to be some usage of Newcastle by Scott Rail, but I can't find too much out about that. But if you know anything, please do let me know in the comments. Now perhaps you're wondering, what is Tim on about with his holistic approach to rail travel? But according to the Lumo website, their brand conceptualises their commitments to customers' individual well-being, combining all elements of physical, spiritual, corporal, emotional and social being to ensure that any journey with Lumo leaves you positively ready. To be honest, I'm just happy if the train's on time. Part of the Lumo ethos is to encourage people to take the train rather than to fly. Now, whilst a lot of people would say that this is a laudable thing to achieve, I reckon it depends on the individual. If you are time driven, I think you're going to fly to London. On the other hand, if time isn't the issue and price is, then Lumo compete very strongly with LNER and there are some really good deals to be had. I'm not sure about how business people fit into this model though. With standard class throughout, I don't think there's a great deal of room to get any work done. But perhaps Lumo, as the railway industry comes out of COVID, are looking to branch more into the leisure sector of real travel than business travel. But anyway, here's our class 803 with the 1347 service up to Edinburgh. And on boarding it was clear that the train was pretty crammed, perhaps not unsurprisingly given the prices of the tickets. As you can see, it's very much an airline style 2-2 configuration. And whilst whale song isn't piped through the train, you do get an LED light with a fairly substantial and sturdy tray table. So we left Newcastle on time, and here's a couple of features of the train that I thought uh, were rather pleasing. The seat is more comfy than what you'd experience on the Azumas, and the headrest is a really welcome addition, as is the location of the plug and USB sockets. They're located at the back of the seat in front of you, so they're far more easy to access. As you'd expect, Wi-Fi was available on board, and it worked really well. Also available through the Lumogo app is the streaming service, which has a great variety of films and TV programs. There seems to be something for everyone. Except me, I couldn't find a single thing to watch. Doesn't really matter on such a short journey, but I think if you're travelling from King's Cross to Edinburgh or vice versa, you'd be really pleased to have this streaming service available, especially if it's going to help keep the kids occupied. Just to mention, if you think I'm talking to myself, I wasn't travelling. This, is... this is very annoying. Why? Is it the material or just the bulkhead? Just the fact I don't have a window view. Okay. Um, why, why can they not give every seat a window view, Roger? It must just come down to, um, for, bit, for pardon a better expression, bums on seats. More seats in the coach as opposed to, if there's a table on each window, then there's obviously clearly less seats to be utilised and less revenue. So, because of that I don't get a window seat. So well, I suppose you need to, there's a factor involved. Um, Unbelievable. There's a factor involved. Well, obviously it's a price factor, isn't it? If you're paying for for a competitive, cheap price, it comes at um, a cost. And that is maybe not comfort, but um, looking at a window. Doesn't, doesn't that go against the whole Lumo ethos? The, the holistic spiritual approach to travel? You've got me there. You've got me there. Not a safety issue then. <laughs> I think, well, as you said, if you wanted bigger windows, uh, you would maybe compromise the integrity of the coach. I'd take my chances, you know. It'd be nice to have a view, but hey ho. Thankfully, there is at least one decent view available. It's an extender. If King Arthur had had one of those. Bought a bottle of coke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Food can be pre-ordered at lumoeats.co.uk and if you're using the service from Edinburgh or King's Cross, the range also includes Lumo's High Street Partners. There is also an onboard catering trolley available. You can get my thoughts and the thoughts of my travelling companion for the day, my good friend Roger, at the end of this video. But just a couple of things I will mention. The ticket price, £4.90, Newcastle to Edinburgh, you can't argue with that. And looking forward, I know that Lumo do have plans to increase the number of services that are operating on this route. But given their pricing, given the level of demand, given how busy this train was, five car sets are not going to work. To misquote Police Chief Martin Brody, Lumo, you're going to need another train. Welcome to a very busy Edinburgh Waverley. So we have experienced Lumo, the new, the new operator. Um, Roger, you've had a day travelling on the trains with me and you've survived, I think. What did you like about Lumo? Um, well, the train was very similar to the TPE, obviously, it's the Hitachi 800, but it did have little, little kind of wings at the top of the of the chair so you could rest your head and, and have a little snooze. So I thought that was a nice feature. Uh -huh. the, the lights on the, the trays was good. That was a nice feature also, which I've not seen before. So that was... Would you use Lumo again? Absolutely, I mean, the price point, you really couldn't match it. Okay, it is, there's, it's the first week, isn't it? So there's, it's uh, special offers, but I'd like to imagine that it's still going to be competitively priced and, you know, it's, it's going to get ready to be at a reasonable price. It's something that is it's acceptable that you'd, you'd want to do. Yeah. I've got to say, the train was absolutely packed. I mean, we were only travelling from Newcastle up to Edinburgh, but it was jam-packed. And I think they're going to do a great service because it's um, it's cost it's it's the pricing is just incredible. You can't argue with it. And um, I also like the the ambassadors, not the train guards. The ambassadors were really friendly and happy to talk and chat. And that's the kind of thing that I really like when I'm traveling, just to enjoy the experience. So I think it's a big thumbs up for Lumo. Anything that you weren't so keen on? Um, well, I think it was just it was, a, it was slightly warming the train and. And I thought to myself, if I was in, on the train from London all the way up, I might have struggled a little bit. But th there was nothing um, that would make me not want to travel on it. It was, it was fine for what it did. Uh, it had a brand new train, uh, singing and dancing, and it was, it was good. Yeah. So I think a thumbs up for Lumo. I'm not sure on the holistic approach to travel. Um, I'm going to give that some more thought. And <laughs> think... As always, thank you for watching. If you've managed to get this far and uh, you haven't disliked what you've seen you might want to give me a wee thumbs up and consider subscribing i, I apologize for this issue with the mask i'm doing my best and the elf ears well yeah not much we can do about that but anyway thanks for watching see you again on tim's travels